Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yeah, this is an HP XY chart plotter. And the model is, um, they call it 7035B. <sighs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's in a super sad state. You can actually move, you can hear. And nah, nothing is really moving here, and and I miss all the mechanics. So, and yeah, the little mechanical locks here. This seems to be working. Yeah, that moves quite well. I believe this one was picked up uh, by one of my friends in a trash can. So <laughs> it's going to be fun to see if we can get anything out of this. Um, it, I, I will show you here a picture from HP uh, Memory Project. So you can see how nice and beautiful this one look uh, if you have all the mechanics uh, for it. And uh, also, uh, you can. Uh, I will encourage you to go to Curious Mark and to see his video series uh, about exactly the same model. Uh, he was lucky to score. Uh, his was in a very, very nice and beautiful uh, state, so it was definitely worth saving. This one is not really worth saving, but it is worth having a little look about what is inside this one because it actually contain a really really cool design feature and i look so much forward to show you a little bit more in detail uh, about that in a few minutes oh, look at that oh, it's completely bended here as well it was definitely thrown at at the floor <laughs> but anyway we need to open it first of all it's not looking that bad here from the bottom but yeah you can see oh it's completely cracked here as well oh yo yo and this one is bent as well so somebody threw it really really hard this entire piece here is bent oh, oh this one took some nasty beatings but anyway what i wanted to show you is this a little bit annoying power supply connector and the fuse so all that looks quite all right we at least got those feet all right so now we are inside and there's a really really nice detail about this bottom plate here you'll see the entire layout of the the pcb and the rear connector it's all documented really really nice so the rear connector is an analog interface that will let you remote control uh, this uh, plotter with the uh, pen lift and the x and y so that is really nice so what i really wanted to show you guys is that uh, about the photo choppers uh, there are they're really, really uh, super cool things. And HP, they were using these in many, many different uh, things uh, back in the 70s and, and 80s. And this is definitely 70s design. And um, the way that they work, is, uh, we got two similar units because we got two uh, different channels, X and Y, obviously, right? So one of them, let's just talk about one of them, right? They are working uh, in, uh, in opposite phase. And one is measuring the, the wanted signal and the other one is measuring the error signal from the pot meter. And that makes a PWM, all right? So this PWM goes all the way to a power transistor that via a rectifier bridge drives the motor. And the motor is also fed with an AC winding. It's actually in series with an AC winding from the transformer. So all that is in phase with the mains. So the PWM measuring the input and the error is just mains frequency driven. PWM on mains frequency. 
that is the cool thing about the whole regulation system here. <laughs> I really love that idea. Um, maybe we should look a little bit on the schematic and go a little bit in detail about how they did the, uh, all that. But well, that was the super, super fast, uh, super brief uh, walk through uh, what this is actually uh, doing. Let's look a little bit on the schematic. It's very, very easy for you to uh, go and uh, pick up the schematic on the internet. Uh, I, I mean, I found like four different uh, sites that got the schematic. So just go ahead and um, and pick that up if you if you need that. So let's uh, look here on, uh, uh, on this uh, picture where I wrote a little bit uh, in red, just to make it easier for you to see. Um, in the upper left, we got DC uh, input signal. This is of course uh, the, the user input signal. And uh, that goes to the two LDRs in, in parallel, right? And then the bottom side of the LDRs, you see the position feedback. They call it a slide wire. So, uh, so this is obviously the, the position feedback. So as you see here, the, it looks like it goes exactly to two LDRs, uh, the, the one signal and the position feedback goes to the bottom side of the uh, two LDRs. But the cool thing here is the AC light shine on the left one and the right one out of uh, phase. And that means uh, you get a, a pulse signal. So you're either measuring uh, the, the wonder signal or uh, you, the sum of the wonder signal and the position, right, in phase um, on the two LDRs. And this is now amplified in the uh, dual fed uh, amplifier. And the, the rest of the stuff is uh, just gain and uh, uh, amplifications, and, you know, curve kind of uh, make the curve nice uh, and all that kind of things. And then we come go all the way to the to the right and we see Q110 and that is the big uh, 3055 uh, power transistor that is uh, actually driving the motor and um, it's actually easier if we, we start looking all the way to the upper right the AC 20 volt uh, goes in series with the motor okay and then the, that motor uh, signal goes to a rectifier bridge and that means now you have DC and obviously the more you short circuit the DC <laughs> you know what I mean the the plus and the minus on the on that bridge the more current you're allowed to flow in the AC path through the motor and and the cool thing is now that AC is indeed in phase with the go left go right go left go right uh, pulses where we are measuring um, the, 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 the sum of the position and the uh, DC input signal. And that is exactly how it, uh, it really works. So I took out the paper plate here, or the printing plate, I don't know what you want to call this. So there's a static a discharge or static charge holding the paper in here. Ooh, yo, yo, we got a date, 1968. <laughs> it's that old. So the cable for the static plate here, the two red wires, we can easily uh, disconnect that with a connector on the other side. But first I want to show you here the top side of the unit. So this is the motor. So this is the X motor, of course. X goes this way. So that will be the X motor and it's geared quite a lot. And then there's this wire that goes around here and the wire just hold this entire sled. So this is the option three, a retransmitting pot meter. So this unit is equipped with this uh, upgrade. This is, uh, I actually don't really know how, what is the cool thing about this option because it's just retransmitting the X position. And shouldn't you really know what X position you got when the X position is just the input voltage here? So this is just an isolated mechanical feedback from this system to whatever you're, uh, you're doing. 
But of course, X is also the heavy part of this unit. So this is what moves slowest. So you can imagine you can now take the feedback from this mechanical point, feed it back to whatever you're driving this X signal with. And this way you can make it uh, read out faster and more accurately. So let's uh, follow the red wires. And here we go. That will be the red wires. Oops. So now I can take away that plate. There's actually a little note here in Danish. Oops, sorry, it's upside down. Here we go. So in 1986, somebody serviced this unit and they say uh, about this the shielding uh, for for the for the optocouplers or photo choppers as they call them it's it's not working so what you need to do is shield this um, against a daylight so to get access to the mechanics in this arm that's having all sorts of problems i believe that this metal rod that we are running on that one up there is also mounted on the sides that is why i had to open here and have a look there is actually a screw that one that is holding that metal rod and the metal rod is also supported by four screws in the back and the back is of course screwed into the chassis as well so they really did all they could to make this a very very stable construction <laughs> even this inside frame here is also screwed to the back side oh uh, and by the way those self locking nuts here on the back side so this one is going to be a little bit difficult but then you can of course hold it in from the top here so that is how it is and i think i'll be able to lift this up now and play a little bit with the mechanics but there is a this uh, this resistor is up here with wires so i need to be very careful how i do this and i was right this is definitely how you get access to the mechanics and that was the screw to tighten or loosen the ball bearings and that one was of course i just took this out so i can see what's going on and look at that here is indeed the problem. This ball bearing has lost its balls. The balls less ball bearing. Oh no. Isn't there another one? I mean, how is this going to work with only three? Hmm, that is a little bit mysterious. I think I need to take this out. I put in a new ball bearing and that of course helps a lot. And uh, I'm now trying to uh, figure out how much I need to tighten this screw for this to work. But then I realized something else. Even if I go all the way down here, it is still, I don't know if you can see this, a little bit loose. And this is because there definitely is another, there's supposed to be another ball bearing down here under this. On the other side right otherwise it's never gonna work right but but where is it <laughs> i mean that is also broken isn't it so how do i get in there of course i figured this out look at this this is also a broken ball bearing down here right so we've got two ball bearings on this side and two i can actually see it now if i do it like this right Two ball bearings here and two ball bearings here, right? So we got four of them on one side, and then this one just push pushes everything in to make it tight on the four points on the top, and then it is perfectly stable. So that is definitely also broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do that? So I'm super happy to show you guys that I fixed this and now it moves super nice and smooth 
As you can see, all the ball bearings, they do exactly what they're supposed to do. I only tightened this screw un until I didn't have any slack around here. And then I added a little, tiny little drop on the gear here. And I also added a little drop on there's actually a bearing inside this motor and that is not a ball bearing so of course you need to add a tiny little drop here and then there's also a gear box here for that one also a tiny little drop on that one and if you look here this is normal you can take grab down here and pull it like this but if you grab it all, all the way up here this clickety clickety up and down that is normal because it's only sliding down here there's supposed to be a tiny little gap so that is perfectly all right but there is nothing up here <laughs> so now you can reassemble all that so after all the cleanup and all the fixing everything mechanical it is all nice and shiny everywhere. So actually, uh, this is my first uh, power up. Um, I did not fix the mechanical thing here in the Y axis. So I need to hold a finger and push this down while I'm powering it up. Otherwise, I think this is going to go absolutely berserk. But I think the X axis is going to be all right if everything else works. I think I'll turn off some of the lights so the sensors, oh, well, the chopper's not going to get too confused. So far, so good. Yes. Look at that. Why is it? There is no contact whatsoever here. That is not... Okay. Whoa, oh, 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 no, 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 good. <laughs> well, at least we got some action. So now I'm trying to see if I can figure out why one of the motors is actually running when it's not supposed to be running. And uh, there's obviously some leak and some problems uh, with the with the photo choppers and uh, the transistors being turned on while they're not supposed to be turned on and all that kind of stuff and what I actually see here is now I've been uh, removing one of the LDRs here and one of the LDRs here in the X and Y axis and they're different uh, that is one thing I wanted to show you see, I believe that this one is the original this is how they're supposed to look So this is the HP 4606, right? And this one is something else. Oh, this is impossible to figure out. So it's called CLI 8666A something, right? And they measure very, very different. So why is that changed? That is uh, something. So also one thing you could you can think a little bit about why is this this kind of distance? Because there isn't really need for ultra high isolation like that. Really, I mean, <laughs> here you could have like a hundred kilovolts on this side, and I mean, uh, why? Why is it that long? That is weird. Um, so this one goes over the neon bulb and then the LDR is pressed into that hole and by the way if you look through it here I don't know if you can see this let me see if I make it dark oh that's impossible to to focus on but it's actually quite transparent and that means the open ends here they also pick up light and it goes straight to the LDR and also, well, they're not really that sensitive from the sides to the detector. 
it's more or less uh, most of it goes in the in the end but look at that it's not closed when you think why wasn't this wrapped like four times around it that is a little bit weird they could also have painted the ends but i think it's very useful to be able to see what's going on and all of them uh, lights up and all that is uh, perfectly fine also i am at a point where i have already spent way too many days on this unit and since of all the mechanical problems i mean i am i need to realize one day sooner or later that i'm not going to get this uh, fully operational anyway so i might as well um just soon give up and uh, find another funny project for for the next few days but it's it's really really uh, interesting to see how this was built how all the different uh, circuits they are invented how this ldr and this chopper stuff is is working with the input circuits and the amplification and then the the pre-driving and then the output driver rectifier diodes to drive the the motor uh, the two motors here and all that it, it's it's really really a smart way to pwm using mains frequency uh to 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 the motors so so i really like the 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 idea and all the the design stuff in this one super good i really want you to see how this light guide is super super effective you can't really see the light at the side well, let me turn off the light here and then you'll see what is going on and it shines again here isn't it just amazing so yeah <laughs> it really works let's do a little slow-mo video of the neon bulbs in one of the choppers so you can see exactly how it's working I think I will call this the end of part one and I can't promise you there will be a part two <laughs> not for a long time at least because I uh, I mean I think I actually found the, the, the problem as you can see here this is a sine wave input and this is the chop signal after the first two field effect transistors this is the, the balanced input stage and this is the the next transistor and um, there is of course no response whatsoever in this signal when I move the slider where is it here it is so this is the slider and there is no response on that signal it's actually just a trigger <laughs> issue but anyway um, this should of course move amplitude and all sorts of stuff when you're moving around with the slider and i get obviously slider input here and all that is uh, nice dc levels and it goes all the way in here so the problem is actually the input field effect transistors they are broken and the fun thing is how is it possible to break the both of them because those two inputs they're completely isolated they're running off individual windings on the transformer i mean how the heck is that possible to blow up both of them uh, that is weird right but this is exactly why when you turn on the light signal that is also the drive signal that initiates all the signals to the field effect transistors then it goes crazy and then the motors just run bang all the way to the end and you also see uh, the other motors move the other motor moving slowly without light and that's of course because there's leak in this uh, in the field effect transistor system and then there, when you get some light and then smack a lot of signal and the other one is not working there's no balance so the motor's just running all the way around this is how it's supposed to uh, work with the with the two uh, in the pair um because one is of course the slider input or the position input right so i think that is what i wanted to show you guys uh, for today